The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say a leak of radioactive water may be worse than they thought. Last week, they found the water had leaked out of a storage tank. Now they've learned it flowed in two directions. Last Monday, workers found more than 300 tons of highly radioactive wastewater had leaked from the tank. The water seeped out of a low barrier through a valve used to drain rainwater. Workers detected high levels of radiation inside a nearby ditch. Now, officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company have made new revelations. They say last Thursday, workers detected even higher levels of radiation near a valve on the other side of the tank. The officials fear contaminated water may have flowed out of there too. And they worry the runoff may have seeped into the ground. So they've decided to remove soil from a wider area than they had planned. They still don't know what caused the leak or how far the contamination spread. Officials suspect some of the water may have flowed into the ocean through the drainage ditch. TEPCO officials say they've known for more than two years that the tank that leaked radioactive water was standing on shaky ground. They say in a test carried out in July 2011, the tank sank 20 centimeters. They're now looking into whether that had anything to do with the latest leak. The officials say the tank may have become deformed or damaged when it sank. They say a contractor had confirmed that there were no problems with it. After that, TEPCO workers disassembled the tank and reassembled it at the current site. The officials say there are two other tanks that also sank during tests. No radioactive water has been found leaking from them, but workers still transfer will still transfer the contaminated water to different tanks as a precautionary measure. TEPCO has been criticized for its poor handling of leaks at the plant and for its late recognition that radioactive materials are flowing into the ocean. The company's president has responded with a pledge to set up a special task force in charge of managing contaminated water. We need to deploy all the required personnel and equipment at the plant. We understand this is a major challenge and we're determined to confront it steadfastly. TEPCO officials say experts from outside Japan will also be invited to join the task force on contaminated water. In addition, TEPCO's vice president in charge of nuclear power will be stationed at the plant to oversee operations directly. Japanese government officials say they're determined to take the lead in stopping radioactive groundwater from leaking from the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. The industry minister is suggesting public funds be used to help cover the cost of building a large underground wall to dam the water. So far, TEPCO has simply reacted to leakage problems as they arise. But the government will now take the lead. Motegi visited Fukushima Daiichi and surveyed the area where contaminated groundwater is being pumped out to prevent it from getting into the ocean. The proposed underground wall would ring the plant in piping. Workers would pump coolant into the pipes, which would freeze the soil and stop water from entering a contaminated area. Motegi also viewed the site where about 300 tons of highly radioactive water leaked from a storage tank and may have seeped into the sea. He told crews with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, to take several measures. They include enhancing the monitoring of storage tanks and installing more welded tanks. The tank that leak was made of steel plates attached by bolts rather than welding. TEPCO officials have hinted that it'll take weeks to find out why radioactive wastewater leaked from the tank. TEPCO executives presented a plan to investigate the incident to the Nuclear Regulation Authority. They said possible causes of the leak include loose joints, deteriorated parts, and corrosion at the bottom or sides of the tank. The officials said radiation levels in the tank are high. They plan to remove radioactive materials in the coming week so that investigators can go inside. The nuclear regulators told TEPCO to speed up its investigation. They also said measures must be taken for about 300 tanks of the same type if necessary.
The Japanese government is trying to speed up decontamination work in areas near the plant. They plan to introduce new equipment that will help lower radiation levels. Authorities at the Environment Ministry had hoped to finish most of the cleanup at 11 municipalities near the plant by the end of next March. But they've had to push back the deadline in seven areas. The work there is going slower than expected. Officials have had difficulty gaining the approval of people who live in the area. Residents are worried about the effectiveness of the cleanup. And authorities have been struggling with a lack of storage facilities for contaminated soil. Misery officials will introduce a new type of device to help speed up the work. The equipment uses water to remove radioactive substances and then gathers up the contaminated liquid. The people of Japan and Ukraine share the experience of overcoming a nuclear disaster. The foreign ministers of the two countries have agreed to do more to cooperate in studying the effects. Leonid Kozara welcomed Fumio Kishida to Kiev. They agreed to share what they've learned about the disasters at Chernobyl in 1986 and at Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. And they agreed on a joint project to study the spread of radiation in Fukushima. They'll use Ukrainian rockets to launch Japanese microsatellites to determine how radioactive materials have dispersed. Japan and Ukraine face the same challenges. I hope we can work closely together. Kishida said the Japanese government will try to regain the trust of other countries. He said government officials will disclose more information about how they're cleaning up after the disaster in Fukushima. Decontamination of areas around Fukushima Daiichi is a seemingly endless task. Officials with the Environment Ministry say they're organizing a second cleanup in some places because radiation there has gone back up. Municipal leaders and residents have been demanding a second round of decontamination. Environment Ministry officials did not originally have a clear strategy for responding. They only said they'd handle demands on a case-by-case -case basis. Now the officials say they'll send workers to reclean sites where radiation levels are considerably higher than they were after the first round of decontamination. Completely invisible. They say rainwater and fallen leaves may have carried radioactive substances. They've yet to decide how much of an increase in radiation will warrant a second cleanup. Workers removed contaminated leaves from woodland areas within 20 meters of homes in the first round of cleanups, but radiation levels remain high in some locations. Ministry officials say they'll send crews to reclean woodland areas within 5 meters of homes. There was a story going around Fukushima province that sunflowers could absorb radiation. Yoshiro Watanabe has more faith these days in his Geiger counter. He patrols his neighborhood checking for hot spots where radiation levels are over the safe limit. Unfortunately, there are plenty of them after three of the six Daiichi reactors went into meltdown two and a half years ago. Every day there's radiation. We can't see it spreading into the air and into the ocean. One day the world will sue Japan for this. He has records for every household. He believes the area should not be lived in, that the government's not been serious about the cleanup. But the locals are crisis fatigued. It's been nearly three years, and nothing really bad has happened to people here, so they've started to think there isn't a problem. But radiation takes 20 years to become a problem. And at the nearby beach, despite news that highly radioactive water is leaching into the sea, locals are cooling off. They told us they were philosophical. Everywhere now was radioactive. They can't escape it. The stricken Daiichi nuclear plant is 35 kilometers up the coast that way, and this beach only opened to the public in July. Back then, authorities said that radiation in the seawater had fallen to acceptably low levels. But when Yoshiro Watanabe took sand samples for analysis, he found levels there were far higher. No one here knows what a safe background level is anymore. The Japanese are now part of a massive non-consensual experiment on radiation exposure.
This man worked at Daiichi and its sister plant Daini for more than 20 years. He says no one really knows how bad the situation is in the reactors because it's now deadly to go inside them. I personally believe that nuclear power and humans cannot coexist. Daiichi's workers have been strictly forbidden from talking to the media. The government is playing down the accident so it can keep exporting the technology to other countries. The Shinto shrine here is seen as the protector of this community. The government these days is not. Anita McNaught, Al Jazeera, Fukushima province. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is discussing the issue of nuclear accidents on a trip to the Middle East. He told the leader of Kuwait that Japan would help respond to a nuclear disaster in the region. Abe is in Kuwait as part of a four-nation tour of the Middle East and Africa. He met Prime Minister Jaber Mubarak al-Hamad al-Sabah. He thanked the Premier for Kuwait's donation of oil following the 2011 disaster. The two leaders agreed to strengthen relations to ensure a stable supply of oil to Japan. Senior officials in charge of defense and foreign policy will hold security talks. I hope we'll deepen our ties to build a comprehensive partnership, not only in the energy sector, but also in politics and security. Abe pledged to support Kuwait in the event of a nuclear disaster in a neighboring country, such as Iran. He said Japanese officials would help with decontamination efforts. Japanese business leaders are accompanying Abe on his trip. The Kuwaiti Prime Minister said the delegation shows Japan's eagerness to contribute to his country's development. Workers at the Japanese power company are trying to convince residents they have nothing to fear from a nuclear plant. The employees of Shikoku Electric Power Company want to build community support to restart operations even as the only two reactors still operating in Japan prepare to go offline. The workers are visiting about 28,000 households near the Ikata plant in Ehime Prefecture, western Japan. They're telling residents about measures the utility has adopted to satisfy new government safety standards. But some people remain cautious. I understand the officials are trying hard, but considering what happened at Fukushima, I still feel there are risks with the plant. The utility is applying for government approval to restart one of the reactors at the plant. Even though nearly 30 years have passed since the accident at Chernobyl, radiation levels are still high around the plant. A no-entry zone extends 30 kilometers from the site. About 30 firefighters and plant workers died soon after the accident due to acute radiation exposure. More than 160,000 people were forced to move out of contaminated areas. They continue to live on government subsidies. A UN survey suggests many children in the area have developed thyroid cancer. Others have developed heart and circulatory diseases. Some complain of physical disorders, including headaches and dizziness. The Ukrainian government provides free health checks and other support to about 2 million people. Japan's Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida has seen firsthand the site of 1986 Chernobyl nuclear accident in Ukraine. Kishida wants to increase cooperation with Ukraine in order to reconstruct areas in northeastern Japan affected by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident two, two and a half years ago. Kishida was shown the concrete and metal sarcophagus that has covered the number four reactor for the past 27 years. Ukrainian officials and engineers explained to Kishida how difficult it was to contain radioactive substances immediately after the accident. They said highly radioactive materials remain inside. Kishida inspected the construction of a dome-like structure that will cover the aging sarcophagus. He also visited a deserted town where nuclear plant workers once lived. I think the experience and knowledge gained by the Ukrainians after the 1986 accident provides a great example for dealing with the accident at Fukushima. Kishida told reporters that he realized the effort to contain the after effects of the Chernobyl accident continues to this day. 
Negotiators from a dozen Pacific Rim countries are sitting around a table. They're coming together to discuss details of a massive free trade deal. Ayuchida joins us now from the business desk with more on that. So, I, how are the talks going? Well, as you might expect, Catherine, the delegates don't agree on everything. And today is expected to be no different. Members of the Trans-Pacific Free Trade Agreement are set to discuss the environment at the 19th round of talks. Japan's officials are expected to oppose a ban on fishery subsidies proposed by the U.S. The members will talk about ways to balance trade promotion and ecology. U.S. officials say assistance for the fisheries industry leads to overfishing. But Japan's economic revitalization minister Akira Amari says resource management is the key to preventing overfishing. Japanese fisheries groups are urging officials to fight the proposed, plan, proposed ban. They say subsidies could include funds for maintaining ports and other infrastructure. And they say they need help with higher fuel prices for fishing boats. There is no way this industry can survive without government assistance. Japanese fishery workers aren't the only ones trying to protect their subsidies. Their counterparts in Vietnam and Malaysia want the same thing. Countries including Australia and New Zealand support the ban. And they've ruled out 